Le soleil est à 150 millions de the sun de is 150 million kilometers away from the earth. And in spite of the distance, the quantity of energy that the sun sends to us is huge. Any time, the fraction of power irradiated by the sun and intercepted by the earth is 175 million gigawatts. In other words, in half an hour, the uh, sun sends us the quantity of energy consumed by mankind during a year. It's huge. Therefore, there is a lot of energy available for a very long time. Now, one way to understand how much energy is available consists in comparing it with other energies. Look at this graph. This graph shows a sphere. On the right-hand side, you have spheres representing non-renewable energies still available. Coal, uranium, oil and natural gas. And we see also the uh, sources of renewable energy available every year, wind, hydroelectric, power. And behind, we see the huge disk representing the sun and the solar energy available compared with the world energy consumption for mankind in its whole. Before we start talking about the solar resource characterization, I'd like to give you a few definitions. We'll talk about solar illumination, i.e. the energy flow expressed by a surface unit of uh, solar radiation, not to be uh, confused with incident radiation the solar illumination for a given surface during a given time. One second of illumination is one joule by square meter. We can also express the solar radiation in watts per hour per square meters. Now, solar energy can be converted in a type of energy that can be used by man. The conversion, there are several options for conversion. The first the best known one is thermal conversion. Thermal conversion can be achieved with uh, thermal uh, collectors. Uh, for instance, we have uh, solar boilers to uh, create uh, hot water for houses. But there is also another conversion option, the uh, conversion into uh, electrical power with the photovoltaic uh, method. The two pictures here show you solar farms on the left hand side a conventional solar farm with fixed chassis found in Europe. The second one on the right hand side is a solar farm where the panels turn and follow the sun. There is another conversion option more interesting and not so well known, thermodynamic uh, conversion to turn the energy in uh, thermodynamic energy, in electrical energy. There are two stages. The first stage is a thermal type of conversion with a specific uh, collectors that will concentrate the uh, light radiation. Power is increased on the uh, collector, and this conversion of solar energy in thermal energy is then followed by another stage where the uh, thermal energy is uh, converted into electrical power with turbines or stirring uh, engines. An example of this conversion thermodynamic concentration uh, system is shown with the pictures you see on the right hand side. We have a uh, dish system with a solar farm and a solar tower in the middle and also a Fresnel system. Now, the whole point of the uh, conversion pathway is that between the thermal conversion and the electrical power conversion, it is possible to store the energy in the form of thermal energy. With this uh, system, solar energy can be uh, converted and stored before it becomes electrical power. Another option is uh, photochemical conversion. Water photolyzers will release hydrogen, which can be used as an energy carrier, for instance, for fuel cells. And because there are several options to convert the solar resource, these methods require a very specific characterization of the solar resource. Characterization can be achieved with two methods. The first method is spectral characterization. This graph shows you on the horizontal uh, axis the uh, wavelength uh, and on the vertical axis uh, the uh, illumination and we see that distribution, energy distribution is not the same depending on the wavelength.
comme le représente par exemple And, uh, deux exemples here de we have two examples of spectral sensitivity with two different photovoltaic systems the uh, sensitivity is different and therefore it is highly important that we characterize a solar resource in adequately for this or that conversion method depending on the uh, spectral sensitivity another method to characterize solar radiation is the so-called angular characterization here we see for instance uh, both the uh, luminancy hemispheric luminancy and the part of the sky that will be seen by the photovoltaic, uh, photovoltaic collector which is then turned into photovoltaic energy whereas with the concentration system that I showed earlier with the uh, dishes uh, uh, cylindrical dishes or normal dishes here they are only sensitive to an angular part of the sky focused in the uh, same direction as the sun around the uh, circumsolar area. Here we're talking about direct illumination. Because it is important to characterize a solar resource, we need to know how to characterize a solar resource. Characterization can be achieved by ground measurement systems. There are sensors called pyranometric sensors that uh, measure the sun. There are several types, and the most well-known one is the pyranometer, which uh, measures uh, sky luminancy in order to measure global radiation. Pyranometers are pointing towards the sun and only measure the part that comes from the main direction of the sun, measuring direct illumination. All of these uh, pyranometric sensors can be included in a uh, measurement plant characterizing the solar resource in a very specific way. Trouble is, these are punctual systems, and because of their price and because of the maintenance required for this kind of instruments, it is impossible to cover the whole Earth with a network of uh, pyranometric measurement stations. So in order to obtain a better characterization, we need to find a different way to measure the solar resource. The uh, second option are geostationary observation satellites because they allow to perform persistent measurements. Bottom left hand side you see the Meteosite second generation satellite and there are methods, for instance the Eliosat methods whereby images recorded by the satellite will be uh, converted in an estimate of solar resources for each image. Here you see two different uh, pictures on the right hand side showing maps derived from the Heliosat method applied to the second generation Meteosat satellite. The uh, annual radiation maps averaged over several years of global radiation and direct radiation expressed in megajoules per square meter. Now, satellite maps resolution are two to three kilometers, and if we want to uh, provide an, an idea of the resources on a regional area, the satellites would not be sufficient. One way to make a map, a high-resolution map, would be uh, the project that was achieved for the uh, Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur French region. A series of maps were generated by integrating satellite data over four kilometers of resolution, taking into consideration pyranometric stations that reduced the uncertainties of the estimates and allowed to calibrate the uh, satellite observations. And in order to increase resolution for the irradiation maps, three to four kilometers, a uh, digital ground model was integrated called RCTM to take into consideration the shadows projected by the topography in the area. By mixing the three sources of information, it was possible to produce reference maps for the global radiation and direct radiation, taking into consideration topography with a resolution of 200 meters, and the maps are available for free on the website www.atlas-solaire.fr.